Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're starting to see a lot of new options for gaming on the iPhone. And the other day I picked up this device called the Backbone. This is an iOS controller. It works with any iPhone from the 6S up. And what you do is dock your phone in here, push the button, and you've got yourself a nice little launcher here along with a game controller that works with just about any iOS game that supports game controllers along with all of the popular streaming services. We're going to take a closer look at this controller and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this controller is all about. Now the price point on this is $99. It is rather pricey for what it is but that's partly due to the Apple tax that manufacturers need to pay in order for their controllers like this one to be compatible with the iOS game ecosystem. And of course, they pass that expense on to us. This is a wired controller. It doesn't connect over Bluetooth. The good news is, is that because it is a wired controller, the latency on it is very low. I did a measurement of the lag on this a little bit earlier and I found that it measures up pretty close to what my Nintendo Switch gets when I've got the Joy-Cons attached and the Switch is in handheld mode. It's really very good, actually, for an iOS game controller. That was pretty impressive. Uh, it feels really nice in the hand also. It really does remind me of the Nintendo Switch layout. Uh, the buttons here are about the size of the Joy-Cons. In fact, the entire unit here is about that size but it feels more comfortable. In fact, I would love to have Joy-Cons that kind of feel like this. Uh, the controllers are nice and thick. They kind of curve into your hands a little bit. Uh, because the phone is in the middle, it is very well balanced, and you've got plenty of room for the larger max size iPhones. Uh, this will work with any iPhone 6S or up. So you've got a lot of options for what phones will work with this. And again, it all feels really nice. It's got some very nice control sticks here. These are analog sticks. You also have analog triggers here on the left and right hand side. Uh, again, if you've used the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, this will feel like a more comfortable version of that. And I was quite pleased with uh, how high quality it feels. Very easy to get the phone in and out of it with one caveat. Um, so when you pull the phone out here, no problem. You can put it back in uh, much in the same way. You just kind of extend out the other end and just snap it into place, and its lightning connector will kind of snap in. The problem, though, is that it does not support phone cases. So if you've got a case on your phone, more than likely that case is going to have to be removed because it won't fit and there's no way to adjust the connector here to make it fit. It is all very tightly engineered here to assume there's no case on the phone, which I think is a pretty big oversight since most people put their phones in cases. I'm kind of the anomaly on that front. So that does add some friction to the mix, and one of the advantages of a device like this is that they're supposed to be friction-free in that you put your phone in when you want to play a game, take it out when you're done, no pairing, no clips to put on. Unfortunately here, you've got to take your phone out of the case, which I think might be a deal breaker for some folks. But still, the hardware is very nice, and they have a couple of neat little features on here too. Uh, one is that you can charge the phone while it is docked in the game controller, you plug your lightning cable into the bottom here and it will pass power through the lightning connector back to the phone. Another feature is adding something that is lacking on my iPhone 12, which is that it has a headphone jack. So you can plug headphones in and get your headphones working again with your iPhone without having to attach another adapter or use Bluetooth. So it's got some things that I think are pretty cool, but again, I was very disappointed that it doesn't work with a phone in a case. Let's take a look now at its app and then we'll play some games. Now the controller will work without the app, but the app does add some features that might make you want to install it. The first is that it offers a really nice launcher for the games that are on your phone. And if you happen to have a game that is not showing up here, when the game is loaded, you just push down the orange button here and it will add it to your launcher. And this might be an easier way to get at the games you want to play if they're kind of buried in your springboard interface. So that was pretty cool. Then you can, of course, just load up a game by hitting the button there to jump into it. And then I can jump back here with a push of the button again. Another thing that it's got is the ability to take screenshots and screen captures. 
So if I hold the button down here, it will take a screenshot of whatever's on screen and dump it into my photo library. And then if I push it down quickly here, it will allow me to capture video of my gameplay and it will drop that video into the Backbone app that I can then share out later. Uh, one thing to note though is that it only records at 1080p at 30 frames per second max. So you won't get the full frame rate of the game, but at least you can do that. And it was kind of nice to have a switch-like function there to get at that. You also have some configuration options in here. So I can go into the settings app here and make some adjustments to the controller. If you're concerned that your controllers might be getting drifty or whatever, I haven't experienced that yet, but it's nice to see that they have a calibration option and you can very quickly do a diagnosis of your analog sticks here. And if they are drifting, you can pop in and recalibrate them if you want. So it's nice to see that built in. You also have the ability to test your buttons out here as well, which is kind of cool. Again, very switch-like in how they implemented that. And we'll jump back out there. Uh, you can mu uh, map buttons, but you have to do that through the iOS interface. And if you hit that option, it'll give you instructions for where you have to go to do button mapping within the iOS settings. So it's nice to just have all this stuff centrally located here. And the app seems to be really well designed. They have some other features here like curating, curating different games that are on the horizon. Uh, so you can find games that are compatible with the game controller very quickly. I'm guessing there's probably some compensation or something involving getting them onto these screens here. Uh, and then they also have a friend system where you can add your friends to the mix and see when they pop online with their game controller attached so that you can uh, play games with them when you're both uh, using your phone in this mode. All right, let's take a look at some gameplay now. I've got Sonic the Hedgehog 2 loaded up. I always like to play these retro games first, uh, but we will take a look at some more modern games and uh, look at some game streaming in a minute. And I'm playing with the D-pad here, and if I'm going to feel lag, this is the game where I'm going to feel it. Uh, this is not an emulation. This is actually kind of a mobile uh, recreation of the original Sonic 2. And it feels great. The lag feels very similar, again, to what I feel on my Nintendo Switch. The controls really feel responsive. I like the D-pad quite a bit. It's certainly much better than the Nintendo Switch D-pad. It's got a nice travel to it. It's pretty firm, but you can really get some precision here. So I'm pretty happy with how everything feels overall. And then again, in the hand, the whole package here feels really, really nice. So all in, uh, a surprisingly good game controller, probably one of the best I have seen so far on my iPhone. So let's take a look now at Call of Duty Mobile. Uh, this game supports the controller. Just note though that when you first load up the game, you have to play with the touch controls through the tutorial. And that's something I've seen on a couple of games that I've been playing with recently here. Uh, but overall, it feels great. It feels very close to what it might feel like on a game console. Again, the sticks are very fluid here, very precise to control. Doesn't make me any better at the game here, but it is something that I think makes this game much more enjoyable versus the touch screen. So again, good stuff here, uh, this time with the analog triggers and sticks. Now, one really good use case for a controller like this is game streaming. That includes doing streaming inside the home, like through Xbox's console streaming, along with things like Steam, but also out of the home stuff like Google Stadia. And all of those services work here because anything that supports a controller is going to work with this one. Uh, what I'm demoing right now is Xbox Cloud Gaming, which is part of their Game Pass Ultimate subscription. And on the iPhone, this can be a little more problematic with game controllers because they have to run this through the Safari web browser. They have a little uh, shortcut that you can install on your home screen to boot it up, but it's basically running through Safari right now. And it detects the controller just fine. It seems to be working really well, actually. All of these internet-based streaming services add some lag to the mix but I don't think the controller is adding any additional lag beyond that. So I'm finding the games to be very playable, although something like Sonic or something that might require a little bit more precision might be a little more problematic. But still, uh, it's working great here. This is River City Girls, this game my daughter and I have been playing through over the last couple of weeks and having a lot of fun on Game Pass with. Works fine. I'm really quite pleased with how it's all coming together here. Now, what you'll note is that if you touch the screen, of course, you get the on-screen touch controls. But once I uh, touch anything on the game controller here, it detects that and removes those controls from the display. So you'll have a pretty good experience here with the controller. Again, it feels really, really good. 
and very, very comfortable to play over long periods of time. Now, unfortunately, despite the high price tag here, you don't get a carrying case with the controller. So you're probably going to want to get some kind of hard shell case for it just to keep it from bending inside of a bag. Uh, this is what it folds up to when you're done. So it's not all that compact, but again, it's very easy to get your phone in and out of it, provided the phone is out of the case. But overall, I've been very pleased with this, more so than I thought I would be. It's very comfortable. I like the controls on this, both the D-pad and the control sticks. It is a really nicely engineered product. And if you're looking for a game controller on your iPhone and you don't mind paying a little bit more than what you think a controller should cost, uh, this one might be worth looking at because it does feel and play very, very nicely. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.